They can't just have an argument on the battleground of ideas, on the, on the battlefield of ideas. They have to interfere in people's families. They have to interfere in people's private relationships because they're interfering busybodies. They're nasty, self-loathing, very hateful people. And they can't just debate politics without making it personal. And on that subject, I welcome back our guest, who is Ashton Whitty. She is at Ashton Birdie on Twitter. Ashton, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Now, I want to talk about this Vice article, which you covered in a video a couple of days ago. If you could flash this up, headline is conservatives are whining because no one wants to date them. <laughs> this came out in Vice, I think it was back in the beginning of March. Let's read a couple of sentences out of this. There's a handful of conservatives in D.C. told the magazine they've been having a real tough go of it since the election. They've just been having a hard time getting laid. According to one unnamed Trump administration official, it's especially hard to land a date if you're affiliated with the White House. Sad. It continues, a reporter for a white right-wing media outlet told the Washingtonian he recently went out on a date that crashed and burned once the woman noticed some conservative books on his shelf. The horror. Even though the guy told her he didn't vote for Trump, he got down and groveled on his knees and considers himself a moderate conservative, she ended things there. So it go, it's not a long article, but it goes on in that vein. First of all, I mean, that's a lucky escape for that guy. He avoided certain misery. So what is the problem there? Second of all, Ashton, you know, if, you know, for women, let's just look at women. If you're, if you're reasonably attractive, you will never be short of offers from men. You know, basic biology overrides politics. That's just a fact. And for men, which is why I say this article is complete BS in my experience, you know, I'm seeing the opposite. Like being a conservative or, you know, just not being an intellectual coward, which is what most leftists are, you know, it's transgressive, it's daring, it's attractive. So, I mean, is Vice correct? From my perspective, this is complete BS. You know, are confident, good-looking men with strident beliefs and purpose in their lives really going to have problems finding a date? Um, I wouldn't say so. I would say it's more the fact that um, a lot of women nowadays are very picky about what they want. Uh, not to mention, I don't think women even really want to date or stay in a long-lasting relationship. They seem to just be more focused on their careers. And a lot of these feminist women don't really care about traditional family values. Instead, they either want to focus on their career or be in relationship, as CNN has stated, with cuckolding. Uh, so the idea that any of these women actually want a relationship in the first place is just surprising. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the cuckolding in a bit. I'll save the best for last. <laughs> you know, isn't this more about, this is what I introduced this with at the top of the show, isn't this more about the left trying to frighten young people into not becoming conservatives by telling them, by putting the fear of God into them, that they'll be desperate, lonely, and unloved if they do. It seems like a very underhanded tactic to panic young people into not becoming conservatives for fear that they'll be alone. Do you see that as part of this agenda? Well, absolutely. I think when people have this fear that they're going to be alone, they're going to put themselves in a desperate state of mind. They're going to throw themselves at any person that says hi to them or do anything that's willing. I think a lot of women who are on the left, they don't respect uh, relationship values or moral values. The very reason that they push themselves into open relationships or, um, you know, man after man and just focus on their career. They don't want family values because they're afraid they're going to get hurt or someone's going to push them away. And then they become conservative and no one's going to love them. And so I think that's the entire men's mindset of the left where they just push people to believe they're always going to be alone no matter what. So you might as well be a freak about it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's very underhanded, which, I mean, it's, from my own experience, it's very bizarre because most of the messages I get are from very young people, both men and women, who are conservatives. And it's, you know, it's, it's this burgeoning movement, which is in the colleges, which is in the schools. You might not see it on the surface, but I get tons of messages from young people who say, I watch your videos, you turn me on to this. This is like the cool, edgy, rebellious thing to be in school now. Obviously, it's it's going to, be, going to be dominated by music and whatever other cultural trends are going on. It's not all going to be political. But for some people who are political, who message me, they're saying, no, it's actually conservatism is kind of the new counterculture. It is the rebellious, edgy thing to do because it's, it's so taboo. So, I mean, that's not going to play too badly in terms of attracting other people. If you're the cool, rebellious kid in school, 
by adopting these kind of edgy beliefs, is it? That's not going to play too badly with the ladies, I would venture. Well, it's really interesting because the majority of women who were doing the Women's March, for example, they were either lesbian or divorced. And so it's no, you know, it's obvious that a lot of women now today, you know, the idea of getting married and settling down and having children is just absolutely ridiculous. So uh, it's no question that these women, they don't really think about those kind of things. Because I mean, look at them, the majority of them, they don't shower, they don't shave, they have blue hair, and, you know, they're all divorced. So of course, they're gonna be angry at the world, angry with men, and of course, angry with family values, because they don't have any. Well, and, and just just angry at the fact that they're very ugly people, both inside and out. I mean, that I mean, we're talking about them frightening young people into not becoming conservatives. You know, we probably, and I've done this on occasion, should be pointing the finger at the state of protesters at Antifa riots and Black Lives Matter events, because, as you said, tend to be. I'm talking about activists. Like when I make this point, and I'm going to get onto it with the science in a second, they always come back at me these blue check marks and say, "Oh, but what about this?" liberal icon look how attractive she is it's like no she's a celebrity i'm talking about politicians i'm talking about activists you look at most of them and we featured them on the show numerous times it's exactly as he said the stereotype is true mainly with these feminist protests the older women are divorced the younger women have got blue hair they're completely out of shape like there's no excuse for being out of shape when you're in your mid-20s sorry there's no excuse that's a lifestyle, that's a, that's a series of bad lifestyle choices. And those people tend to be attracted to this victimhood ideology politics, which allows them to wallow in their own laziness and worthlessness. So we should be you know, getting young girls and saying, pointing to that and saying, don't turn into that, whatever you do. And in fact, I made a video about this called Sexy Hot Conservatives, pointing to the fact that there was one example where it was the, the Antifa girl. I think it was a girl who got punched, and we don't advocate that, obviously. Mm -hmm. But they, they had pictures of her before she joined Antifa. You know, long blonde hair, very natural, very attractive. After joining Antifa, she's got the nose piercing, she's got the dreadlocks. As he said, looks like she hasn't had a shower in two years. You know, it, it, it has an effect, and that ties into the science, which is what that video was about, which I want to get onto. I'll probably get onto that in the next segment here, because we've got about a minute and a half left. But I just want to wrap the uh, Vice article up with this. At the end of the Vice article, which says conservatives can't get dates, they admit, quote, we hear that the dating site for Trump supporters is really struggling to attract new members. So if, if a dating site specifically aimed at Trump supporters is struggling to attract new members, doesn't that suggest that Trump supporters are either happily married or having no problem finding dates, therefore debunking the entire premise of this stupid Vice article, Ashton? No, well, absolutely. I mean, on average, they even say that Trump supporters or conservatives in general are more likely going to appreciate family values, which usually ties to the fact that more so we're going to be married or in relationships and be happy with that, because we don't need to have cuckolding. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we'll get on to CNN um, promoting cuckoldry again. The point I made with that was, People were surprised about it. Why was anyone surprised? That's like their core audience. Of course, they're going to promote it. Also, in the next segment, I'm going to get on to um, the different standards by which we view attractiveness and looks in women. Of course, we're told all day not to look shame women, not to fat shame women, apart from, of course, if it's a conservative women, and then you can say the most vile thing imaginable about them. We'll get to that and more after the break. We are talking to Ashton Whitty. This is The Alex Jones Show Live, breaking news at InfoWars. Dot com. We'll be back. And we are still joined by Ashton Whitty. Go and check out her YouTube channel. She did a video on this about Vice saying conservatives can't get dates. Quite, quite the opposite in my experience. I made a video called Sexy Hot Conservatives, one of the best headlines ever, where I went through the um, science behind this. Cambridge University Press reported conservatives are more physically attractive. This is a quote, attractive individuals are more likely to identify with the Republican Party and are more likely to be conservatives. There was a Daily Beast article based on a UCLA study, hardly a far-right outfit, which said GOP women are prettier. Even the arch-feminist herself, Lindy West, admitted in an article that she wrote that conservative women are prettier. 
So if you look at the science, it tends to be that more attractive women and men are attracted to conservative politics. And of course, they come back and say, oh, but look at this liberal celebrity. She's so hot. Yeah, that doesn't disprove the general science in these studies, which include hundreds and hundreds of people. I'm talking about activists. I'm talking about journalists. I'm talking about the kind of people who were exposed as perverts during this whole hashtag me too scenario. People like Sam Chris, people like Glenn Thrush. It often was the case that the most ardent virtue signaling male feminists were the most creepy, creepy, predatory perverts in almost every case. And again, it's because, you know, they're, they're ugly. I mean, I, I see this connection all the time. Leftists, particularly the most vicious ones who jump to that, to getting personal as quickly as possible. They always have like problems with depression, problems with self-loathing. So in, that, in those cases, you know, they can't attract women in the normal way. So they have to be creeps, they have to be perverts. And the science shows that conservatives are indeed hotter. But I mean, Ashton, you know, the question is, do leftists, as they get older, manifest all that viciousness, all that self-loathing by becoming as ugly on the outside as they are on the inside? Do they actually begin to wear all that hatred on their faces, do you think? Oh, absolutely. Where do you think uh, cat ladies come from, honestly? I mean, if you look at all the women who are at the Women's March, they were, you know, not in shape. They were all divorcees, and they're all in their mid-40s. And these are the same people who are offended by beach bodies and women like Pamela Anderson on uh, Baywatch. They can't stand the idea of pretty women taking over. And I think they're indoctrinating a lot of the college students, uh, females, of course, to believe in this idea. You know, if you look at a lot of sorority girls at UC Berkeley, for example, they all look like they come from nice families. They are all very pretty. And then something happens to them over time where they stop shaving their legs. They wear yoga pants every single day and they start wearing Birkenstocks. And it's almost like this feminist ideology is pushing them to not take care of themselves. Yeah, you see you see the, the before and after photos of some of these women and the transformation is, is quite stunning. But again, you know, they say, oh, Ashton, that's just your internalized misogyny. That's my bigotry. How dare we judge women on their appearance? Oh, and by the way, Tommy Lawrence had plastic surgery, you know, Anne Coulter's emaciated. It's OK to be completely vile about women and how they look and the size they are so long as they're conservative. Quite the double standard there, Ashton, isn't it? Well, what's so interesting to me is that a lot of women who are conservative and they do take care of themselves, you know, whether it be Botox or taking a simple shower, uh, we're actually happier with our lives because taking care of your bodies and actually, you know, basic hygiene tends to tie back to happiness. You know, you're not going to be depressed if you smell good. You're not going to be depressed if you're wearing nice clothes. P happy people just don't look like trolls. It just doesn't happen. No, I want to. Now, I want to get into this. I know you've been chomping at the bit to talk about it. InfoWars headline, CNN promotes cuckoldry as positive for modern relationships. <laughs> this came out back in January. Of course, CNN appealing to its, the interests of its core audience. It reads, CNN has hit a new low by posting a feature article that promotes cuckoldry as a positive fetish for modern relationships. And they quote these experts, including one that said, cuckolding tends to be a positive fantasy and behavior. They also quote a Dan Savage, who is like a gay rights leftist activist who said, the rewards can be amazing. Goes on to say, neither of these assertions are backed up by any evidence or challenged by the writer of the piece, Ian Kerner, who is a licensed psychotherapist. So there was no actual survey or anything that backed this up, that it, it was a positive thing for relationships to let your wife sleep with someone else. They just, they just said it was, and we took their word at face value. But we had another article, though, which completely contradicted this, and this is out of Breitbart. It says, far-left voters more likely to share their wives, right-wingers more sexually dominant, claim study. So basically, they asked people in France, and again, this, this sampling was 4,000 people, unlike the three people quoted by CNN. And basically, they found out that left-wingers are more likely to have orgies to share their wives, and which we're trying to dance around this because it's a family show, right-wingers, this is a quote, are more likely to enjoy, quote, kinky sex. So they're more likely to engage in taboos, but it was the left-wingers who were more likely to engage in cuckoldry. So Ashton, you know, not to get too graphic here, it's, it's a family show, 
Why do you think leftists are more likely to be into cuckoldry? Is there something within their psychological makeup which makes them more attracted to that kind of deviancy? Well, as a psychotherapist, I think that she would know basic psychology and that sharing multiple men for one woman is not going to help a woman psychologically. It's actually going to damage her even more, which may even tie to the very fact that feminists are angry themselves. I mean, it, there's a study show so that women who have more sexual partners at a time, they tend to be angry with their lives. They tend to have worse relationships. I think this ties to a lot of what a lot of these feminists, you know, are. They're angry, they're sad with their own lives. And so I think back to what you said earlier, that they are afraid to be alone. They sleep around and say it's beneficial to the relationship, and all it really does is destroy the very family and traditional values that they should be upholding. Incredible. There you see the study out of the Breitbart.com article. We'll be sure to revisit this topic. It's a source of common interest for me. Just before we go, though, tell people how they can find you on Twitter and how they can subscribe to your YouTube channel, which has been doing very well of late. Um, they can find me on both Twitter and YouTube, Ashton Brady, A-S-H-T-O-N-B-I-R-D-I-E. Okay, be sure to check out her most recent video on this very subject as well. Ashton, really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me.